Hello and welcome to Colin Bradley Artcast. I'm Stephen Bradley. And I'm Colin Bradley. Welcome everyone to our, my new space, not in the garden. <laughs> Looks good. Looks good. <laughs> yeah, we're all moved in and uh, yeah, it's all good. It's all good. It was a very stressful time. Moving oh. is incredibly stressful. I think everybody who's ever moved will totally agree with you. Although I've got to say, I've moved in my time, uh, my married time, um, five times. Wow. And to be honest, I can't remember having major problems. It, it's, it's always been stressful. It can't not be. But I've been, I think I've been very fortunate. But having experienced your uh, trauma and other people's, and I think I'm not going to do it again. This no, is it. absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. Well, we're we're really happy with where we are and uh, the space that we've got. You know, moving from from a small place to a much bigger place, and uh, and being really set up with our family. It's uh, it's not going to be any time soon. So it's really no, nice to, I don't, I, to feel like. Don't blame you. I, I mean, we were we were with you yesterday and I spent a day with you, and it was absolutely delightful. It's wonderful, wonderful environment you've got you're, you're living in, and uh, a lovely house. So yes, I totally agree. Who would want to move from there? You did mention that the people that have moved before you say to you, "Why do you why do you think we want to move from here?" And uh, it's just that they want to move on. But uh, I think they must have had a lot of thought about that before they actually uh, took the plunge. Mm. It's, it's so lovely there. Anyway, mm. enough about that. Let's get on with Colin Bradley Hart. Yes, absolutely. Uh, how have you been, David? Took a week off to allow for the move. How's it all going? Well, um, I haven't taken a week off. I've been busy doing doing different things and um, mainly uh, what I've been doing is searching to be honest for some new projects and I can't, I've got one which I'm going to uh, put to the front now I've got several but this one is going to the front and that's going to be uh, I won't tell you what it's going to be I'll, I'll leave you guessing for, but I, I should be able to reveal all next time next week when we do it but uh, it takes quite a while you know especially because I'm being ultra fussy now I'm trying to find subjects which either I haven't done before that's new to me or is different and uh, will give us a challenge and uh, so and I think we've done that last few uh, pictures I've showed you mm. but otherwise no it's been great I've, uh, it's beautiful weather fortunately in the UK it's uh, and we're taking a bunch of it good good fantastic fantastic stuff well, um, there's a couple of things that we've got on the agenda for day to, for today. We've had an email from Marsha, which we'll go through in a second. And then we've also got uh, a new picture to show everyone that you've uh, recently completed. But first, let's start off with Marsha's email. So Marsha says, uh, greetings from Atlanta, Georgia. Georgia, congratulations on expanding your family and also your new house. Um, no need to respond to this quickly, as I know you have your hands full with the move. Just reply to whenever you have the time. Well, Marsha, we thought we'd take this opportunity on the podcast because you've had some, you've got some really good questions, and I think it's a really good opportunity to discuss them on the show. So, first of all, and we'll flash these pictures up screen, uh, up on screen for everyone. Marsha says, first of all, I saw this picture on Facebook and I really liked it, and I immediately thought of Colin. Uh, and so we'll just pop that up on screen now. And she asks, has he ever done a picture of a boy and a dog or a girl and a dog? I'd love to see him do a lesson on something like this. I just love the combination of a dog and a portrait. It really looks like one of Colin's four pencil pictures. Um, I wish the head wasn't cut off, though. So let's just leave it there for the moment. Um, this is obviously a gorgeous picture, Dad. Um, would you ever do something like this? I would. I would. The problem is... How are you going to get one? If you, obviously, um, I, I've not seen a picture of a, a man or a woman or a boy and a girl with a dog um, at all, I don't think. Not as a posed picture that you could paint. And 
I'm sure they're around, but I haven't seen them. So that's the first problem you've got. How are you going to find them? OK, well, you can do your own, can't you? You can find your sons or your daughters or whatever, grandchildren. Say, um, get their dog or their cat to sit with them. I tell you what, you'd have a hell of a game posing both of those subjects together. I've tried similar things in the past and it just doesn't work. When one will smile, one won't. You know, it, it just doesn't work. OK, you could say, well, why don't you do them separately? Find a lovely picture of a dog and a lovely picture of a um, boy or girl that you want to copy. That doesn't work either because you've got lighting problems, you've got sizing problems and putting them together is a bit of a nightmare. I wouldn't do that and I've never done it and uh, it's bad enough when you've got two dogs or cats or I think the other day someone said how do you put three cats together? Very very difficult to do especially if it's not as a collective, and again, it's the same problem, Steve. If you've got three cats, two might be posed beautifully, but one won't be. And uh, it, it just doesn't work that. So no is the answer to that. I wouldn't do it. And I would strongly suggest that you think about this before you do. <laughs> anyway, uh, I, that's that's my take on it. Of course, of course. And finding that perfect picture, you know, a perfect stock image perhaps is uh, is going to be, be quite tricky. Although we may just, they may be out there, we've just not come across them. But good to know that it's not off of the cards. It's it's still a possibility if the right picture comes along. OK, the next question, uh, Marsha says, my second question is that I need help with the picture. Uh, I'm getting ready to start and I'm trying to get all my colours worked out on spare paper before I begin. But I'm really having difficulty with the ears. It doesn't look like it would be that difficult, but I just can't seem to find the right colours. So she says, um, when I look at the ear on the right, I'm thinking 273 and 175 in favour for the darker areas. But I feel like there could be some brown in there too. But which brown? Which brown? It's the lighter areas of the ear that are giving me the most trouble. I cannot seem to find the right combination of browns to achieve that colour. Could Colin possibly point me in the right direction? I primarily use Faber and Stabilo pencils, so if you can suggest either of those brands that might work, I would greatly appreciate it. So I've got that one up on screen as well, well for everyone. Sure. Um, your advice here, Dad? Uh, my advice was, um, she got a couple of the colours right, actually. You'll be looking at earth colours, so... 175, 273 are earth colours. If you need a lighter grey, then 270 could be used, although I can't see too much in that. But the thing you've got to also remember is you've got lots of other colours as well. Uh, in the m m adjacent to the ear, you've got the head, and that's in the ochres. So what ochres do you use, and how do you combine them with the greys? Well, you would probably... The um, one I would imagine would be very good to use would be 182. So if, if you want to build 182 and up, you could build that up with the ivory and maybe a little grey, light grey, but the 182 would work. I wouldn't use the strong um, ochres that we have. Uh, I, is, is, are we looking at Faber and Carbothello in this particular case? I think we are. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So... There, it's a good combination of colours. You've got um, good backups there. I don't think you'd ever need anything more than that. You certainly wouldn't. Karen Dash wouldn't be uh, necessary in this one. And I think Creta Colour is so close to those other two makes, again, you wouldn't need that. So you can cope with that. Now, there is a couple of colours in the... I can't remember those colours in the um, Carbothella range, but you could use... A combination of some of them but what mm, you don't I think there's like 690 and is that 690 is that, is that, is that one 690 is one of them yeah that that's 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 a good color that's a little bit less bright than the uh one eight um one eight because all my colors now mix up now you've got one eight two 
Yeah, 182, which I definitely would be using. I've used that many times in combination with greys and the uh, browns. Well, the browns, you've got to be careful. You could use brown in the ear. It does look a little bit brownish, doesn't it? And if you were going to do that, I would use that as a top up, not something as a base colour. Stick with the colours you were talking about, that 273 and the... Um, 175 and then you could add the 177 probably is a good color to use you've also got 180 and 280 depending 180 probably would be better that's not quite so severe a brown but i can't tell you that i'd have to do the dog myself to actually work out you know the correct combinations but you're on the right track looking at the earthy colors i think you um, you should be okay with that great stuff great stuff excellent thanks dad i hope that's helpful marcia give all those color combinations a go whack those on the the spare paper first and see how you get on see if you can get close to that color um yeah. and obviously let us know how you get on send us over the finished picture we'd love to see it Okay, moving on to the picture that you've completed this week, Dad. I'm going to pop that up on screen now. How did this one come about? This is stunning, Dad. This is so different oh. from anything I've seen you do before. Well, I've just got it on my um, iPhone here so I can uh, talk about it too. It's one that I'm particularly pleased with. Now, I've, I know I say that with most of the pictures that I do, but this one... I love it. I love, the reason I love it is, first of all, we've got a landscape. Now, you know, me and landscapes work well together. You've got water, which I know people love to see. You've got waves, which is great. Um, and you've got a little bit of background there. I had to alter that slightly, make it a little bit um, more um, believable. The, the picture, the photograph that I was using was a bit, uh, it would have meant using um, almost fogged out colours and I thought well, that's not going to work so that was uh, some of my own invention there um, but the little girl uh, you know me and as you know with Elowen and Aurora and all the other little ones I've had uh, as grandchildren I love, I love that kind of pose and what capped it all was that little bird now, that was in the picture mm. I've um, changed it that, I thought, that is wonderful. Because when you've got a picture like this, you, you need some kind of focus. You, what, what are they doing? Why are they there? Um, what's intrigued them? And therefore, I had the relationship between the girl and the bird. And I didn't, um, I left the same distance. I didn't move them one or the other closer. It was absolutely made for... Um, a artist really couldn't have been better as i say i made slight adjustments to it but um i didn't have to do a great deal of work hmm. as we've said before your pictures especially your landscapes tell a story there's always something going on in there and uh this one as you said was was written for you <laughs> and you could just right. um you could just copy it so um tell us a little bit about your experiences doing this picture you know um was it a walk in the park like what difficulty level would you say this is for people the the only difficulty i had is what i was telling you about is the background at one time i thought do i need it because i could have just not had a background at all in you know the landscape along this i could have got rid of that i could have just made it just a, a seascape really looking out to sea and a lot of artists would have done that forget the uh, that detail because the detail is in the little girl and the the um bird however i felt that you wanted something more to add to the story where the little girl was and it also um i've also got to look at this as um a class picture and to show people how to do that was quite important. The relationship uh, between the, um, the background and the foreground and how that worked out. So, but from then onwards, I've got to say, yes, it was, as you say, a walk in a park. 
there was no I'm, I'm pulling this down as an intermediate because even though it might seem to be quite a tricky picture especially with the water waters are going to be the, the hardest thing I did expect that I was going to have um, a few problems with that but I didn't I, I, I what I particularly liked and I changed a little from the original is the beach that uh, lovely smooth beach and then into the water and into the water you could almost want to could do paddle yourself with a little girl wouldn't you it, it's got that kind of and then to cap it all and I did see this on the on the it was on the, the, the photographic reference the little steps that the girl's done you know for little from the yeah bottom of the picture small things like that are so important to a picture you think well first of all I looked at it I thought hang on she's got what's that white it would work like that because the sand itself would contain a lot of water. And when you put an impression, as you know, if you've um, gone down Broadstairs Beach, when you w walk on wet sand, you do leave a little puddle. And that's yeah. what happens. And I think. I didn't like... spot that before you said that. I didn't even notice that until you said no. that. No, you wouldn't. You wouldn't. It, but it's. And, and it's just a t tiny bit, just a fraction where the little girl is walking she's just lifted her foot slightly that's yeah. her, her left foot slightly and you can just see a trace of that under there these are the things that excite me to be honest i get a lot of um, thrill out of that and that's done afterwards that white is just added on at the end it's just very simple it, well it's terrible to say that but it is once you know what you're doing but I, I just love the picture to bits, and I'm very, very tempted to frame that. If that had mm. been um, your Elowin or Aurora, uh, my two little granddaughters, I, I would have definitely framed it. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I'm tempted with that because it's such a lovely picture. And How I'm, big is it, out of curiosity? How big is it? Eight, it's uh, A4 just slightly under a4 it's quite big yeah because i mean you've got a lot of fine detail on the clothing of the pattern of the fabric as well uh, and the detail in the hair uh, as well as you know the background which even at a4 it must be so small those windows on those houses in the in the right in oh, the back they must are. be tiny yeah they are but i've done it i've done it hundreds of times before steve it, it that doesn't phase me now. The only thing that I did add, and I was, I, I, I was wary. Should I did it need it? Was two little people on that far beach on the right hand side? You, you see them now? You can't see them as people. They're just a couple of little blobs. Would not have seen that at all. Yeah. Wow. Tiny things like that. That wasn't there. Um, and I thought, oh, actually, there, there were. Yes, there were. They weren't like that. But gosh, that is so small. Oh, it's it's you can't <laughs> you can't get any detail, but it just shows you what you can actually imply. Something mm. like that. It just it it's all to do with perspective, really. You can see that mm. being gradually further and further away, or the other way coming nearer and nearer. And this is what's pleasing about pictures of this kind. I'm desperate to find something similar again. I'd love to do it again. I'd love to do this one again if I could. So I envy all you people that can have a go at it. But uh, and the little bird, interesting enough that um, it's so that's quite small as you can imagine, and the little legs, the uh, the the what would be the right leg, is cocked up slightly. And I emphasise that a little more than it was showing on the picture because I liked it so much. Can you see what I mean? If, if yeah, I, I, can, that, I can. Just see that where it's just got back a little bit, which is a very good attitude for for a, 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 a little. I don't know what it is. I'm sure people will tell me probably what it is. I've no idea what the bird is. Um, but it, it's so believable. And then you put the shadow in and it's even more believable. So there's so much to this picture that um, is, is pleasing. The wave, that wave, 
if I was going to pick something that was perhaps a tricky, it would have been the wave, the big one that's coming in. Because that's almost exactly as it was on the photograph. You see, something like that, you can't, you can't make it up. You think, oh, I don't like that, I'll get rid of that dark edge. But you can't, because if you try doing that, something's going to be wrong with it. So that's a question of doing what you see. You can improvise a little bit, you can make it a little bit more attractive, which I did. But uh, you, can't, you can't alter some design like that can't do it yeah, otherwise you're going to you're going to come into trouble best to stick to uh, what you see well what i'm seeing is a very very uh, detailed um sort of master class on lots and lots of different aspects of uh, pastel pencil work so this is uh, this is going to be great i'm sure everyone is looking forward to giving this one a go because that is yeah is is very impressive um so this one will be a class i know there's a lot to come um but uh do not fear they are all coming you will get a chance to do this picture um that's fantastic you mentioned that you have uh, another picture that's on the cards at the moment um perhaps we'll talk about that next week you can tell us all uh what you've done do you think you'll have it done next week uh, i'll certainly have it started if i've um if i'm halfway through i'll show you um, so you, you'll get a taste of it, but it's, it's, it. I can't quite just know how I'm going to. It's an animal, um, but it, it's different. There's something different about it, but I, I can't put it anymore. If I, if I, I'm going to spoil it if I say it. So it's okay. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I just don't want to just do an animal, you know. I just want mm. to do something that there's something like the little bird in the picture, little things that. Uh, make it interesting for me as well as uh, you. I mean, I've got to like doing these pictures and I, because I get a lot of enjoyment out of it. If you had to just turn them off like a, a production line thing, I, it, it wouldn't suit me. So I like to I like to indulge myself as well. I think that's important. Absolutely, a hundred percent. Well, look forward to hearing about that and seeing a work in progress next week about that. Um, but for now, if anyone has anything that they would like us to discuss on a future episode or uh, any questions at all, please always get in touch with us uh, via social media or email. We're always here to do these podcasts for you guys. Um, but for now, we will leave it there for this week. Thank you, everyone, for watching and for listening. I'm Stephen Bradley. And I'm Colin Bradley. Enjoy, Enjoy your week. week.